So today I'm going to be fixing the rear brake on my SV. And uh, if you look down here, I had complete rear brake failure. You can see I pushed down on this and it just goes all the way to the very bottom with no pressure. It's really just supposed to move a little bit. So I bought a rebuild kit from Boss Bearings for my rear master cylinder. And it works on quite a few different bikes. I think it was about $18 or so. I also got a steel braided brake line from Venn Hill that was about $44. So you'll want to remove your seat and this hose clamp that goes to your reservoir. And it's actually kind of a pain to get that thing pulled off, but if you work at it, you'll get it out. And it helps to release the cap later on so you don't drip as much right off the bat. Uh, so once you remove that, you'll have more space to work and you can start going to work on the two Allen bolts that hold the master cylinder on and then you can remove the whole peg assembly um, which allows you to get behind there to remove a cotter pin that's holding the master cylinder to the brake lever. So you'll remove that and then you'll be able to remove the hose from the rear caliper. Now you can start the disassembly of the master cylinder itself. So you'll first start by removing this little hose fitting and it's uh, in there pretty good. You gotta move it quite a bit to get it out. And you can see there's a lot of slimy gunk in there that uh, you're, you're gonna wanna clean out. You can see when I, when I pump it a little bit, it, uh, it doesn't sound very good. Um, for this project, you will need to get some snap ring pliers. Um, to get this part out. You can see here the piston is not in very good shape. Um, there's a bunch of gunk kind of stuck to it, almost is like calcified on there. Um, and there's kits that you can buy that have a brand new piston with it. I think those kits are around $40. I didn't go for one of those thinking that the piston would be okay and I actually was able to scrape most of that gunk off of there. The rest of the parts that I inspected actually looked pretty good. Um, all of the rubber bushings and o-rings and things like that are going to be replaced including the spring. Um, so don't worry too much about those parts during disassembly. Some of them don't come off very easily. But I just sprayed it with brake cleaner and uh, kind of got into all the nooks and crannies and let it soak in there for a little bit. And uh, there's actually a lot of different portholes in there that you need to um, get it into. But I just let it sit in the brake cleaner for a little while and uh, removed all of the rubber bushings. This one is actually really hard to get off and it's even harder to put back on. But I just took a screwdriver to the, the main hard parts here and just started scraping them off. And they actually started coming off pretty easily with the, the brake cleaner to break them down a little bit. And then I just hit it with a wire brush to clean it up. And it actually looked good as new. So I was uh, kind of glad I didn't go for the more expensive kit. But anyway, just take out all the O-rings. And then here, this is the, the adjustment for the brake lever. And I just marked it with a sharpie where it's already set to so that when I put it back together it's easier to find where I started from. But from here on out everything came out pretty easily and looked in pretty good shape. So the kit actually comes with three different snap rings. Um, just choose the one that looks like the old one and then this rubber boot uh, fits into a little notch there by the nut. Um, and then just look at the mark you made and you're going to be able to just line it up pretty good. You can do some fine adjustment once it's um, installed on the bike. And then I put a little bit of uh, brake fluid on this o-ring before putting it in the groove. And uh, all the rubber parts actually go in pretty well. And if you're really paying attention, you'll notice I forgot to put the rubber bushing around the piston, the one that was really hard to take off. 
Um, I realized this uh, about the time that I finished putting the master cylinder back together, but I did remember and went back and fixed that. And to do this project, I would recommend getting snap ring pliers that have the 90 degree angled ends to them. That made it a lot easier. And uh, when you're putting that rubber boot in, um, try to find something that's not metal that you can kind of use to seat it properly. I just used a little squeegee thing, um, but it doesn't take too much to get that in. And then you'll add uh, two of the copper uh, crush washers on each side of the banjo bolt here. Uh, just remember not to tighten it too much at this point. Um, you'll be moving it all around once you put it on the bike and then you can tighten it up later. So I'm a big fan of these Venn Hill brake lines. I previously did my front brakes with the uh, Spiegler brake lines and those work great too but the adjustability on the Venn Hill you don't need a special tool to move the banjo bolt around. It just has a lock nut and you can position it wherever you want and then lock it. So the only issue I had reinstalling everything was these line guides were kind of in the way with the ang angle of the line. So I just removed all of those and it's tight enough that it doesn't move around and uh, it actually loses a little weight and I think it looks better anyway. So here I'm just making a, a little thing to drain the uh, brake fluid into. So when I bleed the brakes, all I do is I pump the foot lever a few times, hold it down, and then crack the nut open about a quarter turn. And just keep repeating that until the bubbles go away. And make sure that it's always topped off so you don't run out. So I didn't bother looking up any of the torque specs um, when I was putting this back together, um, but I went around and made sure everything was tight. And especially on the, the brake lines, because you have those crush washers, make sure you don't skimp on tightening those up because they can take a lot. I know that when I took the old one off, um, it had been torqued down a lot and it was hard to get off. So now that I've ridden the bike around a little bit after doing this, I have to say it's a huge improvement over the way it was before even when it was working. The brakes are a lot more predictable and progressive and have way more power. So if you like to leave black stripes on your freshly cleaned driveway, it's really effortless. But if you uh, end up doing this project, I hope this video helps and thanks for watching.